Thank you. Okay, so up next we got Leo, Leo Broska. He's a mathematician, data miner, and social scientist. He's done software for 20 plus years. Um, he's been doing Python for approximately 15 years because block definition by indentation intrigued him. Um, <laughs> but today he's talking about using Dash by Plotly for interactive visualization of crime data. Ooh, thanks, Leo. Thank you. Thanks, Leo. Can, can you hear me? No, excellent, excellent. I can hear me too. It's quite a strange sound thing. Um, anyway, thank you very much for coming to my talk about Dash. My name is Leo Broska. I'm a software developer, as mentioned, and data scientist at the Australian Criminal Intelligence Commission. And as a developer at the Crime Commission, you work with various criminal data, statistics of homicides, for example. With all these numbers in tables and CSV files, you eventually will be asked, just put these numbers into a graph so that the team can understand what's going on, what it means. Build a dashboard. Everybody, like, everybody likes dashboards these days, right? So you say to yourself, no problem, no problem, let's try dash. And that's, more, that's what my talk is about. Here a quick overview of uh, what I will cover. So first up, what is Dash? Quite a quick introduction. Then I'll do a live demo. Um, then we discuss uh, what else is possible with Dash. And at the end, we wrap up. OK, what is Dash? Dash is a Python framework. That's, I guess, why you are here. And uh, you can use it to create websites with interactive charts and graphs. All the common chart, gra uh, chart types like line charts, bar charts, heat maps are supported. It's pretty cool, and it differentiates itself from other charting libraries with the motto, no JavaScript required. <laughs> and indeed, indeed, Dash makes it possible to express everything uh, for a dashboard type of web app in pure Python. We will soon see how it's done, but let's first get a quick impression what's possible with Dash, how websites with Dash can look like. Here we have a financial fund. Um, it's a demo app for an index fund uh, showing some uh, data tables and a line graph at the bottom. Uh, Dash can look like this. This is a, a site visualizing the number of traffic accidents in the UK. Uh, look at the heat map at the bottom. Uh, that's all done with Dash and you have sort of a range selector and you can uh, select different days of the week you want your information for. There are maps in there as well. That's all done with Dash. And you can even uh, check uh, how many sightings of Bitfo uh, Bigfoot are in the US with Dash. Um, so how does Dash do all of this? Like many powerful tools, it's standing on the uh, shoulders of giants. In this uh, case, three software libraries. First up there is Plotly. That's where it's sort of part of the name from. This is a pretty powerful charting library written in its core in JavaScript, but it has very strong Python bindings because, uh, Python bindings, because the people um, making Plotly, making that, making Dash as well. Plotly utilizes underneath the SVG library uh, D3, you might have heard of. So Plotly does all the draw, drawing in Dash of the charts and provides the built-in interactivity in a chart. In the live demo, uh, we use a particular extension module of Plotly called Plotly Express. It makes the configuration um, really a snap. Next up is React. Uh, React is the layer for the common interactivity in Dash apps. It's a JavaScript library for web UIs, and it enables Dash to build effective single-page web apps. And the last giant is Flask. This is the web frame framework Dash employs. Uh, Flask is a Python framework which, it calls, which calls itself a micro-framework because it is fairly lightweight, and with that, it's a great uh, fit for Dash. Essentially, every Dash site is a Flask app. 
all these three com um, components are ma managed by Dash. So you normally don't have to tap into them. Dash does that for you. Particularly with small applications, there is no need to call these internal components. In practice, with a bigger application, though, you might at least need to call into the Plotly interface to tweak some visual aspects of your, uh, uh, of your website. In the live demo, we will make uh, use of an additional package, Pandas. I'm sure you know about it. It's not part of the ecosystem, but we'll provide the data to the app. So let's do the live demo. For this, we go to PyCharm. I've set up a project. I've uh, created a virtual environment. So uh, let's quickly look at the pip file for it. Uh, of course, we need dash. Uh, Pandas for the data and Plotly Express is a separate install um, which sort of hooks into uh, Plotly. Okay, um, I've here pre-typed the imports. So you have Dash and uh, two separate core, con co core components of it, Dash, uh, Plotly Express and Pandas. Let's uh, read the data in. So we create a data frame from pandas read CSV file. Um, actually, let's have a quick look at the CSV file. So it's, this is um, a CSV file from the Bureau of Statistics. Um, uh, so it's no, no uh, secret data. It's uh, in the public domain. Um, it, it tells you uh, it has three, three, three columns, year, type, and homicides. So it tells you per year how many murders in a particular type of murder are done. So let's say in 19, 1989, there were 115 murders of domestic type. Domestic means it's your husband, it's your wife, it's your daughter, it's your father. Um, then there can be an acquaintance murder if it's a friend of you or strangers and sometimes we just, just, just don't know the relationship. So this is the data. Let's visualize them with the Dash app. We'll um, read them in, in homicides.csv. And now we create a figure object, which we then will show in, in Dash figure object we create with uh, Plotly, and we use the Plotly Express ex extension, which just has a line method, and it's really easy. We give it the data frame, uh, tell it the x-axis we want, what we want to put on the x-axis, what we want to put on the y-axis, homicides. And uh, because we have these three types, uh, it makes sense to color them in different, uh, with, with different colors. For this, uh, we can use the color keyword and tell it to use type for that. And that's it for the figure object. So now let's create the app. For this, we create an app object. There is in Dash a class, in Dash, which we instantiate here. It needs an identifier. We just use the module name when you handle multiple apps, which is sort of rare, but sometimes happens, then you need to give them different identifiers so that the underlying Flask framework can handle them. Um, so that's the app, but it doesn't know how and what to display. For this, there is the layout uh, property in, in the app object. This, this object app is essentially where all Dash things now will happen, and we, uh, there is everything we have to tweak. So let's define how the, uh, how the website will look like. And layout takes HTML tags wrapped in Python. So Dash has all the HTML tags wrapped in Python. And it's um, good practice to wrap everything in a div. So let's do that. The div class is in HTML and div. And it takes uh, a list of what's inside. OK, let's have a header tag. For the title, um, what do we want to show? Homicides in Australia. It's national statistics. Um, 
And of course, we want to show the graph. In the core components is the graph class, which we instantiate here with the figure. And so we tell it just to show the figure. And that's it. So now we have defined what we want to show on the website. We need to run it. Um, for this, the app uh, object has a, uh, has a method run server which essentially um, hooks into the underlying Flask framework and um, brings up a Flask server. We give it debug true, uh, just gives us some handy help later on, we, which we will see. Okay, save this, and I think that's really it, yes. So let's start this. Moment of truth, yes, you can see um, it has started the development server. It's, of course, just for, uh, for development, not for production. Essentially, every Flask app is a whiskey plugin, which you can then serve by every whiskey uh, server. We have made good experience with G-Unicorn. That really works quite well. So if you go into production, uh, swap to G-Unicorn with a couple of workers, and it's, it should be um, reasonably performant. I'll come to that later. Let's look um, what the, uh, what, uh, how, how, will, how it will look in the browser. That's uh, the first attempt. Well, we have the curves. Um, I guess in the presentation, the numbers are a bit small. Let's try to make the numbers a bit bigger. Um, Plotly Express has a theming engine, which we can tap into with a, a template keyword, and they have a, a theme pre for presentations, so let's use that. Presentation, and let's save this. And when we save this, have a look. It detected the change and restarted the underlying web server, and even the website reloads by itself, so now the numbers are bigger. And so that's quite handy. It's not, not, nothing magic. Lots of other frameworks do the same, but it is very handy. So now we see the curves a bit better and the, the numbers are a bit better. I personally like when the data points are more pronounced through little dots. We can, of course, do this with, fly, uh, with um, Plotly and with Dash. Um, and I just want to show uh, how we uh, can tweak the uh, underlying Plotly, Plotly interface. So we, we tap into the figure object. It has a, um, a method update traces, update traces. These curves in, in Plotly are called traces. So, and we um, wanted to use as mode not only lines, but markers as well. Okay, let's save it and it should do its magic again. Yes, it did. Now we have the dots. Okay, so that's what I wanted to get to. It was pretty quick, a couple of minutes, so it's not too bad. Um, so with this setup, you can uh, visualize easy data frames, so-called so tid tidy data frames, very quickly. Um, but of course, because it's so easy, the defaults work so well, if you want to change something, then you need to do more work on it. I want to uh, do one additional thing. Um, here, all the graphs are in one, uh, all the curves are in one graph. It's a bit crowded. You can separate them out very quickly. That's, that's, that's a, it can be a cool feature, actually. Uh, what do I want? Facet. Facet. So let's say we separate them out by type as well. Save this. And then you have different uh, graphs showing the types. I don't think in this case this makes really much sense, um, but it, for some data sets it's really handy just to separate the different types out. Um, in this case, I think it would make much more sense to, that the user can choose which graphs to, uh, to look at. So let's say to compare, uh, compare the total to domestic or something like that. Um, 
For this, we don't need real custom interactivity. And of course, you can do that with a dash. Um, we could enhance our little example, but it takes a little bit too long, I think. So I've created a, a file for this. I just quickly want to go through with you. Uh, tuck, tuck. Uh, I should have asked earlier. You can see um, the, the font is big enough? Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Um, yeah, this, uh, in, in this app, they, we do this essentially the same thing. We, lo we load the, uh, the, the data. We create here a, a list with options for a drop-down from the type of the in the data frame. Instantiate the Dash app. Defin define the layout. And here's something quite nice. Uh, if you don't want to deal, deal with uh, markup tag tags in HTML, you can write all your text and descriptions and information to the user in Markdown. That's very handy. So you just might even have documentation already in Markdown, and you can sh just shovel it into your uh, Dash app. That's, uh, yeah, I, I really like Markdown. So then we have the drop down and uh, the graph. And if you remember, before we gave them the graph, the figure object, and here we don't. So how does the graph know what to, what to know, what to display? Well, we, because the graph has to change with the changed drop-down, we have to wire them somehow together. And for that, Dash offers the callback decorator in the app object, which takes the ID of the graph and the ID of the um, of the, the, the changing UI uh, component, and that gets then used in a function which updates the graph or which draws the graph depending on this. So this is very similar to what we did before. We just instantiated a line chart in Plotly Express, mangle a little bit with the um, data frame, and it gets then displayed. So let's see what it looks like. So here we have a drop down. At the moment, it def defaults to just the total. And we can add, let's say, uh, the domestic murders. We can add in the uh, acquaintances and, and so on. Um, I actually want to, I might for a moment add them in all, just to, to look really for a brief moment at the data. Um, so here we have the total. This is around, uh, around 300. And you can see that domestic and acquaintance murders uh, do, uh, make up for the majority. So each of them is maybe around 40%, while strangers are, in comparison, not that important. So I think that's a take-home lesson uh, just in everyday life. So if you worry about... <laughs> If you worry about somebody is killing you, it won't be the stranger on the street normally. Of course, if it is the stranger, it's particularly terrible maybe, but it, it, it won't be. It's usually your wife, your husband, your father, your daughter, or your PyCon colleague. But, but, but have, let's, let's have a look. Green are the acquaintances, and the good thing is they go down at the moment. So relax, relax. Um, Yes, well, that's, that's the live demo. So you can uh, see how quickly it is to uh, create an interactive demo. Let's go back to the exit. Oh, interesting. What happened here? I'm somewhat still in the... That is weird. I'm still in the... Let's, sorry, let's start this again. Uh, localhost, localhost dash for crime. Okay, there we are. I now have to go where we were. Sorry for that. Okay, live demo. All right, so this was the live demo. Let's do a quick recap. Um, Dash leverage, leverage the power of Plotly. We are the figure object we have seen, and when you use Plotly Express, it's even easier to instantiate that. Um, and the magic of the wiring to what you usually would do with JavaScript is done here via 
uh, decorators in the app object. So this was a brief, uh, brief peek into Dash, uh, but there is a lot more possible. Um, so here we have a dash a mock-up um, of uh, the, our internal intelligence dashboard. And I, will use, I want to use it to um, demonstrate a few more features of Dash and Pro Plotly. Uh, so you can see, that you can wire it with different controls like the radio buttons. You can zoom in. This is now a zoomed view of what we saw before. Um, you can have... Uh, multiple charts by inheritance. That's really a very powerful feature. And uh, uh, modularize um, the, the graphs in components by that. That's something we used quite a bit, actually. You can, of course, have lots of different charts, and they all have very sensible defaults. Um, so far, this sounded maybe a little bit like an ad for Dash. Well, it's not, because we did discover challenges. And uh, one is that multi-page sites are awkward to code. It's not impossible, but Dash, did, that Dash doesn't really help you. So you really have to go into the underlying Flask uh, um, framework. And yeah, it's, it's a bit messy. It's, it's, lots of people have done it, but it's definitely not what sort of Dash offers you with uh, 10 or 20 lines of code. Um, another sort of more strong problem, at least for us, was that rendering can be quite slow. Um, Dash and Plotly are a very big library, so they get loaded into the, or some parts of that, the JavaScript parts of that, get loaded into the browser, and the browser has to sort of unpack them. That takes, at the beginning, always quite a bit of time with bigger apps. It's still fast enough normally, but when your JavaScript engine is slow, like in a virtualized desktop environment, then it sucks. It really does. And it's, it's, it, this can be a deal breaker. In our particular environment, we have virtual desktops. It was. So for the dashboard, we did not continue with the Python solution, rather opted for one of the many JavaScript charting libraries, wiring all the controls manually in JavaScript. Anyway, let's wrap up. We are getting to the end. Um, what is Dash good for? Dash builds quickly, beautiful, analytical web apps. It's really great and e easy to build uh, um, beautiful uh, sites with it. What sets Dash apart? It's pure Python, no JavaScript required, really. The whole API is accessible in pure Python. Even the component com uh, callbacks, F, as we have seen, uh, can be written and managed in Python. What are the challenges? Well, Dash sites can be rather slow to render, depending on the, uh, how fast the JavaScript engine of the rendering browser is. What's the bottom line? Well, Dash is fun. It really has a gentle learning curve, and you get to reasonable results pretty quickly, I hope, as we have seen. This encourages to put interactive visualizations up for the Python-leaning data scientist who would in the past have hesitated to do so. Thank you for your attention. Hey. Thank you, Leo, for such a great introduction to uh, Dash. Uh, okay, great. We already have lots of hands up for questions. So <laughs> I'm going to walk down this way. And uh, Is the browser experience mobile friendly? And can you embed Dash into something else? Oh, uh, in mobile friendly? Um, that depends sort of on the CSS framework you use. And yes, you can make it mobile friendly. Um, whether you can embed it in something else, I don't really know. Yeah. Uh, once the data updated, do you need to restart the web server or just refresh the page? Sorry, once again? I mean, the data updated, you know, the CSV file. If you have some new data in the CSV file, do you need to restart the web server or uh, just simply refresh the page? Uh, that's a good question. 
you need to restart the server, but if, when you have the development server, this will happen automatically as long as the CSV file is in the watched area of the server. Um, if you're worried about live updates, you can do them differently. So then you wouldn't use a normal CSV for that. Hi. So far, um, we've seen in the demo uh, the use of static data. Um, on the other hand, have you tried using streaming data uh, in a network uh, location? Like, for example, um, um, predicting the next uh, where's or when's the next crime going to happen or something? <laughs> um, we, we haven't done that. Uh, I've seen other apps doing that. So it uh, relies then on, on changes to the back end. But we haven't done that. We used, we actually didn't use CSV, we used a database base access uh, via Pandas. So, yeah. Uh, why will we choo choose uh, Dash uh, over uh, like something like Power BI or Tableau? Sorry, once again, please. Why would we choose uh, Dash over other uh, mm, tools like uh, Power BI? Yes. Um, there are lots of uh, visualization libraries. And Dash is really uh, very, it's, it's very easy to get started with. So as you have seen, you, in, with very few code, you can get to reasonable um, uh, visualizations that's probably the, the niche for it. So if you, if you want quickly something reasonably nice looking up there, then use Dash. Um, I was just wondering, uh, what's sort of the maximum size of the data frames that can be loaded in? Yeah, um, if you use the standard framework, it can't be too big. We didn't use anything big, so this uh, all data, yeah, it's, it's nothing massive. Um, you can do with tricks, uh, feed bigger uh, amounts of data in, but I don't think Pandas is, an, is a framework making that easy. Let's, let's put it that way. You used Pandas. Can, is, is that necessary for using Dash, or can you, uh, if, if your data is coming from other sources, can you avoid using Pandas, or is it, no, Pandas, you, no. Pandas is completely um, optional. Uh, you can just feed it JSON and it will display that. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I saw just quickly that there uh, is like a community edition and a commercial edition. Mm. So can you get most of the functionality, or did you have to go to the commercial edition for something? Yeah, that's a very good question. Thank you for asking it. Um, the whole thing is open source, and the commercial version is, offers essentially just hosting, or not just, it offers hosting and support. Uh, we haven't uh, tried that out. I don't know anything about it. Um, but the, the library itself, uh, Plotly and Dash, is completely free, and you can use it uh, to your heart's content. Hey. I, I have to admit that it's a bit unclear on the, uh, on the web, Plotly website. Yeah, they uh, try to push for the sales product, but it's, it's really not very clear, so it's not inviting to buy. So. <laughs> uh, we still have time for one or two more questions. If there are any. Okay, looks like all, all done. So thank you again. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> thank you very much.